Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here on the Washington Maniacs channel. I'm your host Greg and thank you for joining me this morning here or this afternoon or evening or night or whenever it is that you actually are able to watch this video. If you're new here, I would ask that you please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps to support this channel. And with that said, let's get into today's video. So we were, uh, in our last video, we were talking about rounds one, two, and three, I believe it was. Uh, certainly, we were talking about how that the fans were not happy about those rounds, especially rounds one and two. They were just very disappointed with those picks. Uh, you could see it on uh, social media. People were just uh, just all over the place. Now, a lot of them were able to kind of sleep on it. The next day, we saw a lot more positivity about it. But um, as we got into day three, and people really start to see the whole plan they really started to see why Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew made the moves they did. So let's get into it. Now let's look overall of the draft picks that we had from rounds one through seven. Now we didn't have any round six draft picks, but we did have, uh, well, we originally had two uh, fourth round draft picks. We traded one of those fourth round picks to Carolina so that we could move down and pick up uh, a fifth round and a seventh round draft pick. So, um, as you can see, Jahan Dotson, Darian Mathis, uh, Brian Robinson Jr., Percy Butler, Sam Howell, which is the steal of the draft, Cole Turner, uh, Chris Paul, not to be confused with the uh, former basketball player, and then Christian Holmes. You know, we really... We focused on all of the needs, not all of them, but a lot of the needs that I was talking about that we were needing. You know, I was talking about a guard. We went out and got a guard. You know, I was talking about we need help in the secondary. We got help in the secondary. Now, some of these guys are going to contribute more, possibly on special teams. Uh, they're not going to be starters. They're going to be guys who rotate in we hope anyway, and maybe one or two of these guys winds up being more of a practice squad type of guys. We don't know, but what Ron Rivera really looked at, and for the most part, I think, um, how many picks did we have? Nine picks, and eight out of the nine picks were four-year redshirt seniors or something. They were at least four-year players, so they all had tons of experience and were chosen because that they can come in and that they can contribute quickly. They all had high floors, not necessarily high ceilings. So they were not chosen because that they're, they are guys who can develop into monster guys, right? They are uh, players who can come in and they are about as good as you're going to get, basically. But they can come in and contribute right away. They're blue-collar workers who come in for a specific purpose. And so Rivera and company were really looking to fine-tune some of those positions that they drafted. So, and we will get into more of this in, in later videos. But if we took, take a look at this now, you know, we start off with uh, Percy Butler, safety out of Louisiana. Now, this is a guy that I'm pretty excited about as well. And again, we're not going to go too in-depth with any of these guys. You know, that's, that's beyond the scope of this video. But, um, you know, Percy Butler, we need a safety. This is a guy who can come in and contribute right away. Now, you know, certainly he, he can be a special teams ace. And I think he's going to compete, certainly with Troy Apke as far as as being um, someone who can come in and play safety. But I think between, you know, Percy Butler coming in, helping out um, with Kim Curl, some of these younger guys in the secondary, I think that Percy Butler is going to get a lot of playing time. 
You know, I really do. I, I, I think that he is. Um, and, you know, I mean, we didn't expect Cam Curl to show out like he did. And, and Cam Curl has really turned into something special for us. So, you know, Percy Butler, I just think, I just, I don't know, I have this thing about, I just think that he's going to turn into something great for us. So, um, you know, I was I was so pleased, I was thrilled to see Percy Butler uh, getting chosen by the Washington uh, Commanders. Now, this is the one that really, honestly, blew me out of the water. This is the still of the draft, folks. Sam Howe. I really thought Sam Howe was going in like the third round and not by the Washington Commanders. Sorry, I'm taking a, a little sip of coffee here. Sam Howe, I mean, I knew that the Commanders were wanting to take a quarterback, and honestly, I thought that maybe they would use one of their seventh-round picks to, to really pick a, a raw quarterback that they would just kind of sit back and develop you know, along the way. But when Sam Howell is still on the board in the fifth round, you have to pick him. And Sam Howell has a tremendous upside. He can be something special. A lot of teams, a lot of, of um, uh, you know, talent evaluators were very high on Sam Howe. Now, you know, nobody necessarily picked him to go into the first round, per se, but a lot of people feel like this guy, if you can develop him, and he's going to have the luxury of being able to sit behind two veterans, you know, two veterans in Carson Wentz, Taylor Heineke, and develop behind those guys. And so he doesn't have to be thrown into the fire right away. This is a perfect situation for Sam Howe, perfect situation for the Washington Commanders. I mean, this was a steal. This was a straight-up steal for the Washington Commanders. And I am just, to me, this was the best pick they could have had in the entire draft. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I am just... I can't say enough about Sam Howe. This other one really has me excited as well, Cole Turner. Now, Cole Turner, he is not necessarily going to be a guy who's going to be a blocker for you, but he's going to be a pass-receiving tight end. And now, you know, he may be a practice squad guy for the first year. You know, right now we have, uh, assuming he's healthy, we have Logan Thomas. Um, you know, we have... Um, John Bates, who I think started coming into his own a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we have some guys uh, ahead of Cole Turner. But, you know, I think Cole Turner can work himself into the offense. And he can, you know, you go look at, at some of his highlights. I mean, I think he can be an exciting player. And he can be somebody who, you know, maybe you line up in these uh, – more of a jumbo type of formations. You line up three tight ends instead of wide receivers. And, and you know, it's one of those option type of run pass plays. You know, you're you're in a heavy set jumbo, but you have tight ends as wide receivers. And he's one of those guys along with Logan Thomas that you uh, that you eye as far as a target. Uh, I can see some exciting things happening if we can get Cole Turner involved in the offense. So this was an interesting pick, and I really, uh, I was really, uh, you know, taken back by the pick. I think it was a great pick for us. Um, again, this is a guy that I think can come in and you know contribute to us, especially to if any of these guys can come in and play special teams. That's going to be the easiest way to get involved you know, on the team is through special teams. So I don't, I'm not sure how much special teams that Cole Turner played, but, you know, certainly if he can work himself into the offense, we always seem to get thin at tight end. So I would say Cole Turner, you better be ready because you never know. You, you're probably at some point during the season going to get called up. Um, and then later on, you know, we get into to Chris Paul, a guard, um, 
I felt Washington needed to get a guard in this draft. And, you know, while I don't see him certainly as being the starter, he's going to be depth uh, at best. Again, he's a guy that, you know, was a redshirt senior. He's got a lot of experience. He, he's a nasty player. He's big. Um, he's athletic. He can kind of soak up some of these defenders. Uh, this is going to help down the road. Again, we always seem to get thin um, on the offensive line. We've lost, you know, certainly we lost Flowers. We lost, um, uh, we lost Sheriff. I know we kind of did a switcheroo with uh, our guards uh, with uh, Jacksonville. So uh, we, we do have one of those guard positions filled nicely, but we still, you know, need some depth behind those guys. So, you know, getting Chris Paul, hopefully developing him. Our offensive line coach last year did a tremendous job. I mean, I can't say enough about our coach there. So if he can develop Chris Paul into something at least dependable, you know, a guy who can come in and kind of plug up, you know, come in and contribute when guys go down, that's what we need. We need good, solid depth at the offensive line and not – to the point to where, you know, you get a lot of uh, uh, fallback and talent. Now, I think because that he has had a lot of experience already, you're not going to see that. You're going to see some guy who's going to be willing to, to come in. He's going to be ready. Um, he's not going to be so raw. And I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of times when you get these guys who come out of college early, They've got a lot of athletic ability, but they're really raw, and so it takes a while for them to develop. And a lot of times when you have these guys, even though they're rookies, they have played, you know, four years. They've been four years in college, the red shirts. So, you know, they, they have the mental capacity as well. They're a little bit older, but they're experienced. They're a little bit more ready. And for you know for the challenge and so that was a good pickup. I was glad we needed a guard in there. We need more depth on the offensive line. I was very happy with that. The the final pick, uh, Christian Holmes, seventh round cornerback. Again, an area uh, that we always seem to lack on as far as depth. Uh, cornerback position again. The secondary we needed more help in the secondary. Um, hopefully this guy can make it on special teams he's probably going to be a, a you know more of a practice squad as well but again Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew were looking at guys who had played all four years in school and so even though when you look at their prospect grades and and you know their um, you know their thing is you read it candidate for bottom of the roster or practice squad doesn't necessarily mean they're no good it just means that you know they're not going to be superstars they're not touted to be that that doesn't mean they won't turn into superstars they could turn into you know all pro guys you know because you just never know I mean as I take another sip of my coffee you just never never know about some of these guys right so um that being said, it was a draft for need overall, and you know a lot of a lot of fans argue that you don't draft for need; you draft best player available. And as I've said before, yes and no. You draft; you have to draft for need to a certain extent. Now you don't just go and reach for players. And we'll, you know, certainly when we start to, to get into videos where we focus a little bit more in depth on each player, we will talk about was that player reach, you know, uh, did they get drafted at the right place. But in general, yeah, you don't just go and draft like you need a quarterback. I'm drafting a quarterback in the first round, even though there's no first round talent for quarterback. I'm not saying that. That's the reason why that you see teams who trade down. 
because what they need is not there in the first round, and so they trade down to get more picks so they can be in the position to where that player that they need is right there available at the spot where they should be drafted. And that is how it kind of works. And so, you know, fans sometimes just go all in. They, they kind of parrot what they've heard, you know, just little bits and pieces like best player available, best player available. Well, yeah, you do that, but you also move around so that you choose the best player available that happens to also fit the need of your team. And so, and I say that because if you have a Tom Brady on your team and, you know, let's assume Tom Brady was, you know, 30 years old and still has 15 more years left and you have him on your team, you're not going to draft the you know the best quarterback in the draft why would you do that you know yeah you may draft a quarterback you know to to back him up but why would you draft the best one because that is not necessarily your need so that being said we can talk about all of that <laughs> that's probably a video in itself anyway that is four through seven in my opinion, four through seven was a home run. It was masterfully done. And, you know, Washington and all, you know, if you, if you, it's funny, the polarizing views of Washington's overall uh, moves in the draft, I think uh, Sports Illustrated gave them like a D. And then everybody else is giving them a B minus. I would probably give them a B a B minus as well. And but you know overall, I thought they had they had a great draft. Okay, it probably doesn't make sense to say they have a B minus, but they had a great draft. I would say the moves that they made were definitely the moves that they should have made. And I said pre you know pre draft, I said that they should trade down in the first round. And they, that's exactly what they did. They traded it down. And then later on, they traded it down again. And so they did everything that I felt like they needed to do. Uh, the only thing that they did not address was linebacker. And they're still, you know, well, I will take that back. They did address some of that in signing some, un, uh, some undrafted uh, players. And so we'll get into that later on as well. Uh, but we still got some more free agents out there that we can sign. We can always look at re-signing um, uh, Landon Collins uh, for another hybrid position if he's willing to take a pay cut. But overall, what do you guys think about this draft? I mean, four through seven specifically, I thought was a knockout of the park. You know, I, I really felt it was a tremendous is a tremendous draft. Now, you know, when you get to the seventh round, you don't never really expect those guys to be, to, to make much out of anything. I mean, I don't expect a lot out of Chris Paul or, or Christian Holmes. You know, maybe those guys can make it on special teams. I don't think you're going to see much out of those guys in, in the first year, maybe not even the second year. Uh, so there's probably not a lot to talk about. I think you're going to see a lot more action from Percy Butler. You're going to see probably some action from uh, Cole Turner. I think he's going to be able to get in and see some playing time. Uh, Sam Howell, hopefully you're not going to see some action from him uh, this year unless it's you know preseason uh, because I think hopefully we're going to have a great year from Carson Wentz. Uh, hopefully Sam Howell will continue to work his way up and maybe by year three, maybe Sam Howe will be ready. But who knows? Who knows? Let me know in the comments section what you think. Uh, please, if you can just support this channel by uh, putting a like on this video, if you possibly can. Uh, it really helps the algorithm. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know um, your thoughts on the draft, especially four through seven. What did you think about four through seven? Have you seen any of these players play personally? What are your thoughts on any of these guys that we drafted four through seven? 
And as always, thank you for joining me here. And we will start talking about each and and one of each and every one of these players in the next videos and with that said you guys have a great day